Hi there, my name is Claire Lim and welcome to Insomnia Gaming Festival. We are speaking to some of the lovely guests who are joining us in April and I'm very happy to be joined by these lovely two. Yes, hello, please introduce yourselves. Billy, who are you? What are you doing here? Hi. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Uh, I'm Billy, uh, Billy Trix. Um, what am I doing here specifically? Well, I'm in a costume for a reason. <laughs> I'm part of Session Zero and we're going to be doing a awesome improv D&D performance for you which I'm very excited about. Excellent. And Josh, please explain your role in uh, Session Zero. Welcome. I'm Josh Drove-Hayes, and I'll be acting as the Dungeon Master of Session Zero, which means I will be controlling the world, the environment, the events, the NPCs, and reacting to your, the audience's, requests live on stage. So tell me, Josh, the first time you guys ever appeared at Insomnia, what was that like for you guys? <laughs> Session Zero as a group met and discussed the idea of doing an improv theatre thing and I've been involved in improv theatre for most of my life performing down in London for many years but when Billy and Jess and Cal all came and said hey we want to do some improv theatre this was for some of them the first time they'd ever been on a stage never mind the insomnia stage the audience was fantastic the energy was great the lights were blinding everyone's eyes and it was just this beautiful chaotic fun um, immersive moment of adventure role play on stage and it was great and we want to recreate it every year Oh, amazing. Billy, was it very nerve wracking when you did it for the first time? I think like we obviously wasn't sure what the audience was going to throw at us. This is our first time really like doing anything like this. Like I've done like pantos and stuff before and obviously streaming for years, but it's just not the same as getting up on stage and then just hoping that like the audience don't pick something absolutely atrocious that you're going to have to try and like, oh, can't say that. Let's do something else. Come on, guys. Um, so no, it's, it was, yeah, nerve wracking, but honestly the most fun ever. Like the adrenaline rush you have when you're there and everyone's like getting into it. It's just so much fun. And Josh, I know that what you do at Session Zero is slightly different from, you know, uh, conventional D&D. Can you explain that for me? <laughs> Conventional Dungeons and Dragons, or tabletop role-playing in general, is mostly about gamifying maths. You use numbers to describe what you can and cannot do. Every single character stat, every ability, every enemy strength, every environmental hazard is simply reduced down to a number, and then you compare two numbers together to work out what would happen. What we do at Session Zero is we use the loosest interpretation of maths. We will still roll 20-sided dice, or D20 for tabletop players, and then we will use the number generated to work out where the story should go to. However, the story always takes pride of place. The adventure, what we refer to in the tabletop role-playing space as the rule of cool. If something would be awesome, funny, silly, memorable, epic, or just insane, we try really hard to make that happen. And sometimes the dice allow us, and sometimes the dice don't. And sometimes we fudge the rolls to make sure the dice do allow us to do this. The dice guide our adventure, but it's the players that create the adventure itself. Josh, like, so when you're throwing it out at the audience, that's it. Somebody catches it, they just call out the number. They catch it, they throw it back to me, and I catch it as fairly as I can. They'll add some spin onto it, they'll try and make it so it lands on 21, but when I re-catch it, I simply call out the number that I am facing, and I try and be as fair as I possibly can. The only reason we don't ask the audience to call out the numbers is simply because it's very hard to hear the audience on stage because of the, the size of the rooms and because we are wired up with uh, lavalier and radio mics. So I throw it to them and they yeet it back to me and I grab the dice and read the number that I see. Now, tell me, Josh, what is the role of Dungeon Master? The Dungeon Master, contrary to popular belief, does not exist to kill the players. Most people believe <laughs> that Dungeons & Dragons is this competitive game between the players and the DM. The Dungeon Master facilitates the world existing, voices the NPCs and controls the environments. It's actually not my job to push the story forward. It's my job to make sure the world reacts in a consistent and believable way to the players pushing the story forward how they want to. Maybe I'll voice a bartender and I'll tell the players about untold riches in a local dungeon. Maybe I'll tell them that a local lord requires someone to go and clean out the attic. Maybe I'll say there's bandits in the south. And then wherever the players want to go to, I will explain how the world reacts to them. Dungeons and Dragons, or improv games in general, are an open imagination world. The players do what they want, and I tell them how well the world lets them do it. 
Now, Billy, tell me about your character. What's their name? What kind of character are they? Well, this is Yamara Trix. She is a high elf sorceress, and everyone kind of knows her for her love of fireballs. Um, and yeah, I don't care how big the room is, I'm going to do it because I like to see everyone kind of like squint and fluster and see what they're going to do in reaction to it. Um, she is really kind of like a highborn. She doesn't like to get dirty, and it's a really nice like playoff um, when uh, we've got. Um, uh, Malak and um, and Harag as well, because uh, it's just seeing their dynamic because they're all so different uh, really works together. How much of your character is similar to yourself? Would you say with Josh is oh. Josh is already laughing? He's like, mm, yes, <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. What did it's really funny because uh, like I definitely like base quite a lot of her like. I don't want to say like backstory elements on her precisely, but there's a lot of stuff that I've personally struggled through and had to work through that like she is dealing with or has dealt with. So that's definitely an interesting, interesting question. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Okay, cool. You, you got you got away with it. Like I thought we were gonna get something juicy, but that's very, that's a very good answer. Very good answer. So guys, um, Yamara Tricks and Josh, you know we've got a lot of guests uh, this year's Insomnia Festival in April. You know it's it's a tough crowd. Uh, we are going to have to interview you for the position of guest. So let's start with you, Josh. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself to start. You asked the Dungeon Master a question, attempting to discover his history. Would you please roll a 20-sided dice? In order for the audience at home to understand, I've provided you with a random D20 website. Could you please roll that and tell me the number? Okay, before, before I do this, bossy i'm writing that down okay let's go we've got a 20. is it a natural 20. it's a natural 20. <laughs> a natural 20 is known as a critical success within the tabletop role-playing world it doesn't always mean that exactly what you want to happen happens but you do get the best kind of answer so what would you expect what would the best thing that i could tell you be something that will get you through the gates of insomnia gaming festival my friend the gates of insomnia gaming festival I worked as an actor in London for several years. Unfortunately, due to the lockdowns, when all of the all of the theatres and all the film and TV stuff shut down, I started making YouTube videos about video games, mostly MMORPGs, online adventure games, and then pushing out into retro games. The channel took off, but I really enjoy tabletop role-playing games, so I started running games for various people, local and online. I met the fantastic Yamara. I met the insatiable... Uh, Mulak Drab, and I met the angry Anne Harag back. And since then, I've simply been narrating their adventures around the fantastical world and all of their crazy adventures within. And I'm looking forward to continuing to narrate their adventures on the Insomnia stage, where I will happily take inspiration, advice, and even suggestions from the audience about where their adventures should take them. Okay, I'm writing bossy nerd likes to talk okay uh next we've got uh yamara tricks is it um can you tell me a little bit about yourself please thank you yeah sure so um i will always be the last person on the dance floor you can count on me to not go to bed early i am going to be up there dancing until my feet fall off because I've got the stamina too. I love just getting fully into things and putting myself in places where I probably am not qualified to be yet. Okay, um, irresponsible. Okay, um, we've got next question here. Um, Josh, would you, I mean, I feel like you've done this already, but would you like to walk me through your resume, please? Walk me through it. <laughs> I've been a martial arts instructor. I was a mechanic on a go-kart track. I was a supervisor on a paintball field. I've worked as a warehouse operative. I have worked as an actor. I've worked as a drama teacher. I have effectively built the set that Session Zero are using for our uh, online YouTube adventures on the Session Zero channel. I've done a lot of stuff because Whenever a fun thing happened, I would walk up to whoever was in charge and say, hey, can I have a go? And that ultimately ends in me thinking, maybe I can create a world, a universe, a fantastical idea, and maybe other people can explore it. And they have done, and there's a lot of exploration left to go. 
Sure. Okay, I'm going to put God complex, but I'm going to put a question mark next to that as well. No, you can put an exclamation mark next to that. I'm a DM. This is how we work. Okay, I'm putting that in capital letters with the exclamation mark. Um, Yamara, uh, can you walk me through your resume, please? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been part of the Adventurers Guild before. Um, I have um, taken down my father in a 1v1 battle. Um, I uh, ruined a children's birthday party. And um, most recently, um, you know, uh, just really, really honed in on my fire arrows. And I am I never miss now. Okay, daddy issues. Okay, I'm just writing that down now. Um, okay, uh, Josh, uh, tell me about a time when you failed? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? A time when you failed. I have no idea what that word means. Okay, I'm writing God complex down again. Um, Yamara, tell me about a time when you failed, please. I once tried to uh, take someone down with a icy bolt of ice and it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. It was successful, but the wrong shape. Uh, okay. What was the sh what was the shape meant to be, and how did it come out? It was supposed to be a dragon, but it it came out as a, a not very good dragon. Okay, confused. I'm writing down confused. Um, okay, uh, Josh. Um, what are your greatest strengths? I think you're going to be able to answer this one. My greatest strengths. How long do we have? Not long, my friend. Give me the highlights. <laughs> The highlights, it's a shame because if you look at the highlights list of my greatest strength, the entire page is just highlighted. I would say that my greatest strength is probably humility. God complex. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the same question to you, please, Yamara, your greatest strengths. Oh, greatest strengths. Probably my ability to adapt to all circumstances. Okay. I'm just putting a question mark next to that that's on thing um i'm just being honest with you i'm a very honest interviewer um okay um question for josh this is the final question i'm wondering what your answer will be to this one how do you like to be managed josh i don't like to be managed i'm in charge i'm the one with the dice i'm the one with the dungeon master's screen i'm the one that's going to tell you how i'm going to manage things unless you want me to just roll a d20 and then we'll work off the number from there Wow, okay. I'm going to roll a d20 and so I can get another answer here. Okay, three. What does that mean? A three means the Dungeon Master is annoyed. How dare you question his ability to run an adventure? The Dungeon Master looks around quickly. The bar you're in suddenly starts to fill with hooded individuals. They pull out daggers. They're a cult. What are you going to do? Roll for initiative. Oh, I'm, I'm going to ask them these same questions and confuse them. Uh, I think that's probably what I'll do. And uh, they're not going to get past the gaze of Insomnia Gaming Festival, that's for sure. But I will roll. I'm intrigued. I've rolled a 20, a natural 20. You roll a natural 20? Mm -hmm. There's a cult of people surrounding you in this bar. They want you dead. You don't know why. How would you fight them off? What special powers do you have? What weapon do you think you would wield? My special... Well, I'm from Glasgow, so um, we're in a bar. Okay, so I'm going to drink them all under the table. My special <laughs> weapon is a uh, shot glass straight to the eyeballs. You challenge the leader to a drinking competition. He simply steps forward, taller than the other men. He puts his dagger away and laughs at you, pointing toward the bartender and demanding he start pouring shots. Do you believe you'll be able to drink this guy under the table? Yes. Roll a d20. And that's how we play d and <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Okay, I like that. That impressed me. That impressed me. Okay, how do you like to be managed, Yamara? Final question. I also do not like to be managed. I don't care if there's a... I don't care if there's three doors over there and you don't want me to go to two of them, Josh. Okay? You've given me two other options for doors. I'm intrigued. What's behind the other doors? Oh, my God. I'm going to put whiny down here uh whiny well i mean it's a tough decision we do have a lot of great guests we do need a bit of chaos though so i'm gonna allow you through the gates of insomnia gaming festival um i think you could yes. be a great addition to the team um thank you very much for answering my questions um josh and billy you are absolutely fantastic and i cannot wait to uh, see you both next month um, is there anything you would like to say to encourage people to come and join you and watch you guys live? Do you want to start, Josh? 
Dungeons and Dragons is the colloquialism we use to mean tabletop role-playing game in general. There are many different systems, but the only thing that every single player has in common is a love of adventure, of random chance, of the scrappy underdog, of pulp fantasy. Sit in the audience and shout out your ideas. Hopefully I'll call on you and we'll generate a story together and we'll be able to have an unforgettable, memorable romp through either a forest or a dungeon or a castle or anything you can possibly think of. It's going to be fun. So come and have an adventure with us. Love it. And what about you, Billy? Yeah, exactly. Like You do not want to miss out on this. It is so much fun. The what I, I promise you, the last times we've done it, there's been some really odd things that have come to life. So don't leave it to your imagination. Come and shout it out. I promise you it will happen. And we're also going to be doing a meet and greet as well. So you can come and actually hang out with us. You guys and the odd. Wouldn't have seen it. Wouldn't have seen that coming. Um, <laughs> thank you very, very much, you guys. Um, everybody, please go follow these guys online. We'll put the socials out uh, alongside the videos and the clips and things. So make sure you go follow them. Make sure you go say hello at Insomnia Gaming Festival. We will see you in April. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.